Hello and welcome to part two of this lecture. In this video, I'm going to be drawing on the work of John Creswell to focus on developing a key set of qualitative research skills that will give you an advantage in the creative industries and concentrate on those skills that are most relevant to the media ethnography approach in this subject. Creswell's books are in the library if you want to explore uh, and they're very uh, useful and approachable texts. So I recommend checking those out. The first skill in thinking like an ethnographer is perspective. Perspective involves the ability to look at things differently and to examine texts, objects, technologies, processes, organizations and practices from the perspectives of others, both human and non-human. This skill involves identifying your biases and challenging your own assumptions. This is not an easy skill to develop because we are creatures of habit and we exist within frameworks of values, beliefs, histories and practices that we often don't recognize and acknowledge. Developing this skill involves understanding how your own cultural background shapes and frames your personal experiences and influences the way you comprehend the world and how it informs the way you communicate your ideas. Problematizing is an important skill that ethnographers must develop in order to conduct research effectively. Never underestimate the advantage of being able to accurately and effectively identify a problem and shape that observation into a question that can be answered qualitatively. This skill is vitally important in whatever field you work in because problems and issues cannot be solved unless they are first identified and framed in such a way as their answers will provide novel and innovative ways of addressing or at least better understanding the problem. It's very unlikely that you will be able to solve problems on your own and the skill of problematizing is a way to help others help you in collaborating and collectively problem solving. As Creswell says, this requires collecting and analyzing data from people who can help you answer the question. Approaching. The skill of problematizing is connected to the skill of approaching, which for the ethnographer means being able to effectively select the best method for collecting useful data that will help you address the problem. This includes discerning the pros and cons of the approach selected, not being locked in to a rigid approach, but also being informed about the structure of the method. Creswell argues that being versed in ethnographic methods, which we'll explore next week, means that you can start to invent your own approaches and mix and match various different approaches and innovations to help refine your approach. Developing the skill of approaching means being flexible, which is another skill in itself that we'll get to. Just because you are familiar with one approach does not mean that it is the best for addressing the problem that you are currently investigating. Qualitative research requires that people approach research from a perspective that may be different than what they have previously learned. Conceptualizing. One of the most difficult components of thinking like an ethnographer is the ability to conceptualize the central phenomenon under investigation and frame it as a relevant research question or topic. The sign of a good thinker, says Creswell, is the ability to conceptualize in a simple way as well as a complex way. Making your research topic conceptually interesting will help ensure that your audience will understand and engage with the results. This does not mean being overly complex or overly broad in your research, quite the opposite. The more focused, refined and specific your approach is, the more successful you will be in conceptualizing the problem, the approach and the answers. Here, overlap with perspective is important and trying to find the unexpected, the unusual, the different, can be both difficult and uncomfortable, forcing you into a perspective that you might not agree with, that might challenge your assumptions. Part of the process of conceptualizing is the development of a research question. The research question is what guides your investigation and focuses your attention to the central phenomenon, helping you to eliminate material that you don't need. A research question must be specific, relevant, and interesting to you in order for it to be interesting to your audience. In order to write a good research question, you will need to do background reading 
and examine research that explores similar types of problems or field sites that you are exploring with similar methods. This is the skill of contextualizing, but this skill is more than just background reading. It combines perspective, approaching, and conceptualizing through ethnographic approaches that involves accounting for a network of relations of the actors that we consider to be relevant to the study. The term actor comes from Bruno Latour and actor network theory. An actor is basically any semiotic article that is capable of acting or grants activity to another human or non-human actant. The term actor does not imply motivation. It simply means that something can be the source of action. For example, if you are researching a mobile phone app, you need to be able to contextualize all of the technological as well as the human components, from the app designers to the software processes, the telecommunication infrastructure, and the legal permissions involved in the transactions and habits of the user with regards to the device, the app, and of course the service providers. Contextualizing is therefore the skill of accounting for the connections between actors in a specific setting, which means it is connected to the skill of mapping. Mapping is another often underestimated skill that we encourage you to develop in this subject. Mapping involves making the network of relations identified through contextualizing visible to an audience. Mapping obviously takes its lead from geographic maps but it can include system maps, maps of relationships and genealogy, maps of processes and changes over time. Mapping, charting, graphing, and other visual methods are effective ways of communicating your research, investigating the network of relations in a field site and should be a significant part of your blog posts, your data collection, your analysis, and your final digital artifacts. Narrowing. Narrowing is the advanced skill of selecting, which is vitally important to qualitative research, which tends to focus on the experience of a small number of people and or locations in order to provide a depth of understanding. Narrowing is the skill of resisting, expanding, and progressively limiting the scope of your topic and the ambitions of your investigation. Narrowing and focusing will contribute to the success of your research project. This is where the idea of the niche is really important. Because remember, a niche can be very narrow, but very deep. Narrowing and focusing does not mean superficial. It means concentrated. Narrowing is a way to sacrifice the breadth of understanding for a very specific and extensive level of understanding. You are encouraged to narrow your research project to a very fine-tuned degree. For example, you might be interested in researching the experience of online advertising. Okay, first step is to narrow a field. We could pick Instagram or Google, but let's pick Facebook ads. Right, let's narrow this even further to a particular type of product. Let's say face masks. I'm seeing a lot of those at the moment. Now we should narrow even further, perhaps to a specific brand or a style, or uh, a price range. Such focus then invites different ways of approaching, conceptualizing, and contextualizing the experience of those ads, and mapping the network of relations involved in the personal experience of them. Don't be tempted or caught in the trap of doing your research project on a broad and therefore somewhat vague topic. Qualitative research means investigating a topic by exploring a problem and providing background about the relevant issues associated with the problem. This skill requires an open mind and deploying new perspectives to uncover information and new elements of the problem that you might have not registered before. Exploring does not require the researcher to explain the predetermined factors that contribute to the problem. Exploring is a way to describe and systematically analyze and the core essence of the skill is the ability to uncover new information and look at new information in ways that help you to develop a complex understanding of the problem. Qualitative research helps to understand and include the voices and perspectives 
of marginalized groups, diverse cultures, different socioeconomic and cultural experiences, and attention to differences of race, gender, sexuality, indigeneity, and disability, as well as attention to those outside the mainstream and outside what is considered to be the norm, particularly what we call subcultures. Comparing is another underestimated skill of the ethnographic researcher. Comparing previous research and research of different types to your data is actually a core skill of any researcher. This skill involves juxtaposing what others say about a phenomena or a similar phenomena to your experience and the actual lived experiences of others in the field and particularly potential participants in your study. Comparing can lead to innovating and problem solving and creating new approaches to old problems. Comparing can lead to a better understanding of the problem itself. Comparing is at the heart of developing new knowledge and information. Comparing is also connected to the skill of contrasting. Contrasting involves examining the way reality is understood and how it can be understood. Contrasting can also help reveal new information and produce new knowledge. For example, comparing what an official document of what an organization says it does to the actual lived experience of its employees, members, consumers, or constituents can help to refine, improve, and better communicate the values and goals of the organization to its audience, as well as identify systematic problems. Or think about contrasting the way a mobile phone game is advertised to the way it is actually played. Reflexivity. Okay, this is a big one. One of the problems of quantitative research is the degree of assumption and systematic generalization that is baked into the approach and therefore the results. In order to work against this, qualitative researchers, and especially ethnographers, must develop the skill of reflexivity, which requires the researcher to be self-conscious and to report on the assumptions and bias that we bring to the research. This involves building on all the previous skills to systematically reflect on the way that our personal views and experiences shape our understanding of others and how others are in turn shaped by their own cultural geographies and experiences. One of the methods for developing the skill of reflexivity is to be attentive to the issues of voice and ask a set of key questions in any given situation. Who is seen as the authority in this situation? Who has the right or the ability to speak? Who speaks for others? Who is left out? And perhaps most importantly, who is benefiting from this situation and how? Reflexivity and inclusivity are connected to the skill of sensitivity. Sensitivity is a skill that requires constant attention and compassion because ethnography involves spending time in locations and settings that might be new to you and it might involve dealing with topics that are hard for you to understand and talk about. For example, in the Lundstrom and Lundstrom reading, the researchers are doing a podcast ethnography on a podcast that does not align with their political beliefs a white, radical, Swedish nationalist podcast. Just because something is objectionable, it does not mean it should be ignored and misunderstood. Rather, the opposite is true. As Creswell suggests, wrestle with difficult topics to understand and embrace that which may challenge your beliefs, ideas, and values. Finally, the last skill of the ethnographer to think about this week is flexibility. As a researcher, you might start out with a topic and an issue or a research question that guides the beginning of the research process, the warm-up. However, as you start to define your interest and do background reading and preliminary research and map out the maze of your topic, a different focus might present itself 
and that's totally okay. Being a qualitative researcher means being guided by the data, not the experiment. When addressing a key problem, the complexity and reality of human life means that, eth- means that ethnographic processes might change your focus and may change further over time. As it does, so will your understanding of the problem. As you do more background research and observe and investigate and collect more data, you might require an entire change of direction, an alteration of the methods, or a changing of the framework, or a reimagining of the research question. Flexibility is an important skill that means that research does not lose anything by investing time and energy into a problem only to be taken in a new direction as you learn more. In your digital artifact and your research reports, you can document this process of change. Reflecting on your flexibility and change is an asset and not a problem in itself. As you start to research, you might go off in a totally different direction. Talk to your tutors if you're in doubt and discuss this change and note it and document it as you proceed. Okay, that's it for this part of the lecture this week. Continue to think about these skills and develop them in your blogs this week. Thanks for watching and happy researching.